and a few of these tech tracking tools are completely free. Greg Martin is an IT security consultant who can count the FBI amongst his former clients. He had an opportunity to put some open source software called Prey through its paces when, during the recent riots in London, Greg's laptop was stolen. My flat was robbed. I filed the police report. They came and dusted and told me, Greg, there's, there's probably nothing we're going to be able to do for you. So at that point, it dawned on me that, well, um, you know, I did, in fact, install this Prey software. Available for Mac or PC, once installed, this software sits quietly in the background on the machine. It doesn't activate until the computer is lost or stolen. If it does go missing, its owner can log into the Prey website and report the loss or theft. From this point, if the stolen computer goes online, it can report its status back to its original owner via the Prey site. A day had passed, uh, and I'm in, at dinner, basically a business dinner uh, in Luxembourg. I was out of town, and um, the first report came into my iPhone. As soon as I open the report, I see the guy's face, his GPS location. Greg's machine was password protected and the hard drive encrypted. But it looks likely that a new admin account was created on his computer. This allowed the laptop to be used and it allowed it to surf the internet. And that's when things got interesting. The goal was I want to see him log into Gmail, Yahoo, Facebook. I want his email address. I want his name. Something that I can identify this person and not just his picture. So um, sure enough, after watching him for about, I think it was about two hours, you know, I was getting very frustrated. I was like, come on, I know you have a Facebook account in there somewhere. And uh, finally he logged in and that's where I got him. You know, I just had unlimited amount of data on the guy at that point, where he went to high school, um, you know, his family, who his friends are. So I basically created this dossier on him and uh, gave that over to the police. And sure enough, when I was on my way home from Luxembourg back to London, uh, they had sent me an email saying, Greg, uh, we, we think we're ready. Go ahead and send us uh, an email when you get a report next so we know he's home and we can go get him. And uh, it was really funny because the next report that I got, the kid was sitting on the couch with his shirt off kind of relaxing. And I was like, there he is. <laughs> you know, go get him. And get him, the police did. The 18-year-old man captured on webcam pleaded guilty to receiving stolen goods in a West London magistrate's court. And Greg got his laptop back. One device which is relatively easy to keep an eye on is the smartphone. Lots of smartphones have GPS-enabled map features. The same features that can be used to find a location can also be used to track down a smartphone itself. iPhones, iPods and iPads can be traced for free using Apple's Find My iPhone feature. Locate Me is another free bit of software which supports Android and BlackBerry phones. If a phone is lost or stolen, its owner can log into the Locate Me website. Here the handset can be located on a map. The user can also make the device's screen flash and emit an alarm. There are, of course, paid solutions to tracking and recovering lost technology. Services which will do the detective work for a machine's owner for a price, usually a paid subscription. The service we provide is a full recovery service that will track that laptop, gather the data, work with the police force on your behalf, engage the police on a recovery process um, and, you know, and protect you, your, your personal uh, uh, safety as well so you won't get, have to get engaged. We have geolocation data, we have uh, keystrokes um, and we have uh, sometimes in some instances screen captures as well we can gather. And from those, we can determine who is using the machine. Uh, they'll typically, an, an example is they may go onto Amazon and buy some music. Uh, they'll, they'll put their passwords in, their username, their, their address will be in there. And so we've got a forensic pack that we hand to the police and say, here's the information on why this is the suspected uh, thief. But it's not just technology that needs keeping tabs on. Last year, 23,000 push bikes were reported stolen in Britain's capital. Which is why I've come to South London to meet a man who's created a device which could help retrieve stolen bikes. GPS tracking devices for cars and motorbikes are commonplace, and after having several push bikes stolen, Harley Clark was inspired to create a tracking device hidden in a bicycle lamp. 
my background is in software, so I tried to develop an intelligent software algorithm that could manage the fact that there's no battery in a bicycle and also be able to produce a circuit and a piece of software that could sit covertly inside a bicycle which doesn't have that many places to hide something like this. We've had people who've recovered their bicycles there and the police have gone around there and found the bicycles in people's flats. The spy lamp itself costs £125 and hidden under its skin is a GPS unit, a pay-as-you-go SIM card and modem and a vibration sensor. When this little vibration sensor that's inside it detects some vibration, it will switch on the GPS, try and get as, as many satellites as it can and try and get an accurate location and then after that it'll transmit that signal back using the GSM modem to our central website and then the central website will store those positions. We then use the Google Maps API to display those positions on a map so you can follow along and see where your bike's going. Of course, if you do manage to track down your stolen property, make sure you leave recovering it to the professionals. The police.